So I had planned to make this video much sooner, but then I came down with one of those really nasty, super lengthy, super annoying sinus infections, which I'm still getting over now. But in a way, the universe has its reasons for why things happen, and honestly, I'm kind of glad I got sick, because now I can talk about the absolutely abysmal RTX 5060 Ti launch. From delaying shipping out all the SKUs of the card to reviewers, which was definitely on purpose in order to obfuscate the entire picture from unsuspecting early adopters, to adding further confusion to Nvidia's already confusing naming schemes with the 16 gig card and the 8 gig card, I believe the 5060 Ti launch quite appropriately sets the tone for how this entire video is going to go. But we'll dive more in depth into modern day woes with Nvidia later on. In the meantime, let's take a step back and look, sure. Nvidia has always commanded a premium for their products in the grand scope of the GPU market, but for good reason up until recently anyways. Nvidia has always been a pioneering company. SLI, PhysX, Hairworks, G-Sync, Shadowplay, these were all groundbreaking features back in their day that AMD initially had no answer to. Of course, PhysX and Hairworks are straight up useless today, and I guess you can argue that Nvidia didn't really invent SLI more so than they bought it from 3DFX back in 1998, but then again, AMD bought ATI in 2006, so we can consider that playing field level. Funnily enough, ATI actually wouldn't have an answer to SLI for seven years after its inception in the form of Crossfire in 2005. Similarly, when Nvidia came out with Shadowplay in 2013, AMD wouldn't have an answer to that until 2016 with Relive. To AMD's credit, they did invent anti-lag, even though Nvidia kicked its ass not even a year later with Reflex, and AMD was much quicker to copy G-Sync, released in 2013, with FreeSync just a year later in 2014, but the fact remained. Nvidia was the pioneer. They were the ones driving innovation forward, while AMD primarily walked in their footsteps to focus on products with a better value proposition than Nvidia's own, rather than focusing on trying to straight up outcompete them. This has pretty much always been the dynamic between Nvidia and AMD and... Wait, doesn't all of this sound familiar? Graphics cards are similar to CPUs in many respects. They're silicon based, their whole deal is crunching raw information, they're one of the two most crucial computer components, draw a relatively large amount of power, and unfortunately, there are only two major players in the market as a whole, AMD and Nvidia. This is an unfortunate situation because monopolies, duopolies, and oligopolies in general don't exactly have the best track record of driving innovation in whatever market they're present. The graphics card market is unfortunately no exception. AMD and Nvidia have a near identical relationship as AMD and Intel's from the pre-Ryzen days. AMD's the underdog. While they usually deliver products with a better value proposition than Nvidia's own lineup, they consistently fail to release a flagship that can meaningfully compete with Nvidia's own flagship in terms of raw performance. This lack of meaningful competition, mixed with a couple other factors we'll go over more in depth, has created quite an unforgiving market environment for budget conscious PC gamers. Believe me, I felt it myself. When I first built my computer, I chose the GTX 970 for my GPU which was $320 after tax. When I upgraded to the GTX 1080 on the legendary Pascal architecture, the fastest consumer grade GPU in the world at the time, besides the Titan X Pascal, which launched a bit later, I paid $510 after tax. When I upgraded again to the RTX 3070, going down a tier on Nvidia's ladder, I paid $580 after tax. Though in fairness, I paid $50 over MSRP during the shortages, which at the time was still a steal. But now, if I wanted to step back up to Nvidia's 80 tier today, the MSRP for an RTX 5080 is $999. In practice though, if I really wanted to buy one, the real price is more like $1400, which is absolutely fucking disgusting. Why has the price increases gotten so sharp lately? Well, it boils down to three things. One a lack of meaningful performance competition from AMD, two, Nvidia's newfound reliance on AI upscaling and frame generation, and three, shitcoin miners and scalpers. 
Before we go ahead and boil these down though, I do have a quick message for you guys. This is XSMP. This is my Minecraft server that I own. I've been running it for a little less than a year now, and it is a cross-platform survival multiplayer Minecraft server. You can play it on Java Edition and Bedrock Edition, which means whether your friends play on their PC or on console or on their phone, you guys can play on here together. We've got a large, gorgeous spawn with a PvP arena underneath, a Bedrock menu for our console players who don't want to sit there and type commands on a crappy digital keyboard, a robust economy and a functional shop with all sorts of different categories, individually toggleable keep inventory, the ability to claim your own private land to keep it safe from griefers, and even be able to toggle certain settings that you want to have on or off while you're on your land, including the weather, and just so much more. If you guys want to check it out, it runs on Minecraft 1.21.5 for Java, or on whatever the latest version is for Bedrock. The IP is xsmp.us.to. Hope to see you on there. With that being said, let's boil these down one at a time, shall we? As I've broadly mentioned so far in this video, AMD has not held the raw performance crown in a very long time. In most recent history, the absolute best example I can come up with where AMD actually gave Nvidia a worthwhile fight was the R9 290X. Launched in October of 2013, this card was in direct competition with Nvidia's GTX 780, which had launched earlier that year in May. The R9 290X actually outperformed the 780 by about 10% while being $100 less, which was great. Until Nvidia launched the 780 Ti just a month later in November, which earned them back the crown. That's right, AMD had taken the performance crown successfully from Nvidia for one whole month, nearly 12 years ago. Since then, the R9 Fury didn't really compete with the 980 Ti, the Polaris architecture didn't even try to compete with Pascal, Vega 64 got kicked by the GTX 1080 and then curb stomped by the 1080 Ti, the 5700 XT, while a notable improvement for AMD, still got clapped by the 2080 Ti, the 6950 XT lost narrowly to the 3090 Ti, and even the 7900 XTX got whacked by the RTX 4090. As much as we all wanted to see this change, even AMD's latest 9070 XT, while having excellent pricing, in theory, doesn't even come close to an RTX 5090, and isn't even as powerful as the 7900 XTX. <sighs> Granted, people are comparing the 9070 XT to the 5070, which draws a more fair comparison, especially in the price bracket, but that doesn't necessarily mean that AMD is going to launch a 9080 XT or a 9090 XT. Remember when they eventually followed up their 5700 XT GPU with the 5800 XT CPU? Yeah. Case in point, AMD's had nothing on Nvidia in terms of raw performance for 12 fucking years. They just can't FUCKING COMPETE! I'm not gonna lie, I was initially confused when Nvidia announced RTX. You're telling me my games get to look marginally better and the only cost is cutting my frames into a fourth of what they were? Wow, this totally sounds like it's gonna catch on. Of course, it was a first generation product and they were making specific hardware RT cores to make this possible, so surely that was going to get better over time and it did. But then what about this DLSS thing? So whatever performance I just lost from enabling RTX, I can effectively get it back by turning this on? How? Well, by lowering the actual render resolution of the game and using AI to upscale it to make it look like a higher resolution. That actually sounded pretty promising to me. It sounded like potential. Sure, in 2019, generational AI was still in its infancy, and as a result, DLSS had a lot of artifacting that it needed to take care of. But hey, just like RTX, it was a brand new thing, and Nvidia could surely make it into something better. I had predicted when DLSS came out that by around this time in 2025, we'd be getting esports level FPS and AAA titles with all the advancements we'd make in AI and rasterization performance. Of course, I was a gargantuan optimist, but I also didn't expect Nvidia to use DLSS as a crutch, because that's essentially what they ended up doing. 
With DLSS frame generation, we then had cards not just lowering the render resolution and using AI to upscale, but also using AI to slip a frame in between two actual frames to make even more of a perceived performance uplift, when in reality, AI is the one doing all the work. Granted, this AI doesn't exactly come free, it obviously costs all sorts of R&D money to improve AI, but what if you get to a point where it's cheaper to improve the AI rather than improving the silicon itself? Ah, NVIDIA, rather than mainly demoing raw rasterization performance when showcasing their new products, would heavily focus on benchmarking their cards with RTX on and DLSS on. In essence, NVIDIA began to give consumers a perceived performance uplift through the means of AI, rather than an actually meaningful performance uplift by improving the silicon itself. By RTX 5000, Gamers Nexus actually made a fantastic video discussing how NVIDIA has been giving consumers less a die for their dollar with the new generations compared to the older ones. It's actually quite damning. NVIDIA at this point had shifted not just from being a graphics computing company, but also a leading supplier in artificial intelligence hardware and software. In short, NVIDIA is effectively less of a GPU company now and more of an AI company at this point. And this is reflecting in their GPUs. Why bother actually improving the silicon and making real raw performance uplifts when you can just use the AI you've been developing to make it look like the performance was improving instead. This is, by far, the thing I personally despise about modern day NVIDIA the most, but this is only the second piece of the puzzle. There's still one more glaring reason why NVIDIA has been able to keep spoon feeding its consumers less for more. Scalping! It's nothing new, right? It happens all the time upon any type of product launch, primarily with concert, sports tickets, and electronics. It's a pretty simple concept, really. The initial supply is limited, so people buy up all that supply, artificially decreasing that supply even more while the demand is high, and then resell that same product to desperate consumers who are willing to pay additional money to get their hands on the now seemingly elusive product. The irony here, of course, is that it's all artificial. If scalpers didn't artificially deflate the supply of products by buying them all up, the demand for these products would go down much quicker. In recent years, scalpers have gotten so exceptionally good at dragging out this period of artificially diminished supply for as long as possible. Very few consumers are actually willing to pay the exorbitant scalped pricing for a product that should be substantially cheaper, but what if that product doesn't get cheaper? What if they just keep on buying that product for months, maybe even years? Well then, perhaps at this point, after waiting eight months since its launch, maybe paying $800 for a PS5 doesn't look so bad now, does it? Not when they've been going for $1,200 for the past eight months. Who cares that they're only supposed to retail for $500? This? This $800 PS5? That sounds like a fucking steal if I've ever heard one. I have no concrete proof of this, but I know Nvidia saw what happened to the AMD Polaris GPUs when it was discovered that they were super good at mining Ethereum prior to the transition to proof of stake. And Nvidia definitely saw what happened to the PlayStation 5 when that launched, and now they even began to see it with their own GPUs, scalpers charging customers over $1,500 for an $800 card, and of course, customers were actually fucking buying them. Nvidia saw this, and they definitely took notes, because that's all money going into a scalper's pocket instead of their own. They'd be crazy not to get on all that action. So why not just effectively scalp our own cards? hit our customers with that classic shrinkflation so they can pay more and get less. All so we can make more and give less. So just to wrap things up here, Nvidia has gotten very, very comfortable in the position that they're in. Their main competitor simply isn't doing a very good job at doing what competitors do, their AI advancements have allowed them to artificially inflate the perception of their product's performance, and scalpers continue to artificially diminish the already limited supply of these cards. Artificial competition, 
artificially inflated performance, artificially diminished supply. Nvidia has just become the champion of artificial. They are just so proud to be the absolute fakest company they can possibly be. While most of my anger is certainly directed at Nvidia, I also can't help but be angry at AMD too. This is almost exactly what they kept letting Intel do, and they finally had to come up with a solution for that in 2017, Ryzen. They had launched a $500 component that performed nearly identical to a $1,000 component from Intel. After nearly a decade of quad-core mainstream processors, Intel had no choice but to make their products better, sparking a legendary race of x86 CPU performance improvement that we had not seen in decades. Better products for the consumers at lower prices. So now that we're at the 12 year mark of being the underdog against Nvidia, I gotta ask something to you all at AMD. When the fuck is the GPU market finally going to get its own Ryzen?